Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Tenenbaum. And I am Dr. McCadden. And we are here at West County Plastic Surgeons for our Tuesday night edition of Facebook Live. Tonight, we wanted to chat with you all about something that has been kind of a hot topic in the media lately that involves breast implants and can be a little bit scary. Um, so we want to really provide you with the facts as we know them about an entity called Breast Implant Associated Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma, or you may have just heard ALCL or BIALCL, Breast Implant Associated ALCL. So we are going to try and clear up um, some facts to the best of our ability, kind of try and explain to you what it is who should be concerned about it, uh, what you should do if you are concerned, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Great. So, so why don't you yeah. tell us what is ALCL, yeah. breast implant associated ALCL? Yeah. So, so hi everyone. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just give you sort of the known facts about it and we'll kind of sit here and uh, look at questions and we've had a couple of mailed in throughout the last couple of days. So, so breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma ALCL is a type of a uh, it's a type of cancer it is not breast cancer it's a type of lymphoma meaning that it's a it's a cancer of white blood cells and specifically it is a T cell lymphoma so it is a uh, a T cell which is a type of white blood cell cancer there's different types of ALCL. There's primary cutaneous ALCL, systemic ALCL, which we've known about for years and years. And the World Health Organization recognized the breast implant version of it as a distinct entity in the last couple of years. Um, so, so what's the deal? So first of all, who gets it? So what we know is that all cases of breast implant associated ALCL, um, where we know what type of implant the patients have had in the past. In every case, the patient has had um, a textured breast implant at some point. So meaning there are no cases where somebody, that we know the history, where somebody has only had smooth surface breast implants. So let's just back up for one second just so everybody knows breast implants there's lots of different kinds of breast implants we talked about this a little bit when we talked about breast augmentation so what he's referring to is the surface of the implant can either be smooth or it can have certain types of textures um, there are also different shapes of implants so round implants generally can be smooth or textured and the teardrop shaped implants currently are all textured implants right and so, um, yeah, so sometimes people equate ALCL with silicone. It's got nothing to do with that. We've seen patient with a saline implant but had a textured surface who had ALCL. But it is also just that around the world, um, outside of the United States, saline breast implants are rarely used. It's almost all silicone. In our country, there's a little bit of a higher use of saline. Um, and so that's also a part of it. A lot of these cases are silicone implants, but that's simply because silicone implants are far, far more popular worldwide than saline implants. But as Dr. McCatton said, we don't think the association has anything to do with the fill of the implant. We think it has to do with the, the surface of the implant. Right. So, so other things that we know, so the majority of cases of ALCL that uh, develop usually develop somewhere in seven to 10 years after the implant was put in. Um, I believe the earliest uh, case was around 18 months, but that's really unusual. Um, some people ask us about tech, uh, tissue expanders. There's only one case that we know of where somebody had in, a the world. in the world ever, where somebody had a texture tissue expander that developed ALCL. So that would be extraordinarily rare. Um, so, you know, seven to 10 years uh, after uh, this implant is placed, a uh, patient will notice um, in probably about 70 to 80% of cases, what's called a seroma or a fluid collection. So typically the breast was normal and then just sort of all of a sudden in a couple day period, the breast will get a lot more swollen. Um, if that happens um, and you see a doctor about it and they're 
not worried or not mentioning this to you, you need to come to a board certified plastic surgeon who's familiar with this. Um, and then they would do a series of tests. Um, essentially, they draw the fluid uh, out and then they sample it uh, for a, a very specific battery of tests. Um, so there's a specific um, set of findings uh, with labs that will show that it is uh, ALCL. Now, probably around 20 to 30% of cases will present with a mass. Um, and so that mass can also be biopsied and also, uh, and, it, and it may also have these characteristic findings. Um, should be noted that um, in the majority, 70 to 80% of cases of women who have ALCL, it's completely treatable surgically. So that means that uh, the breast implant, the capsule that surrounds it needs to be entirely removed and that that's uh, curative in the majority of cases. You'll see that online and in some of the scientific journals and meetings called an on-block resection. Um, so that is when somebody has ALCL. Um, I should know, you know, occasionally we'll have patients that come in with other um, issues with breast implants and they'll request an on-block resection. But to be really clear about this, the really the only time when an on-block resection is needed of a breast implant and a capsule is when the diagnosis of ALCL was made. So if somebody sampled the fluid, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's ALCL. In fact, most of the cases, it's not ALCL. And so the fluid is sampled, it's not ALCL, you don't need an on-block resection. You should probably have your implant out and get that fixed, but that's different than, than having ALCL. Now, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just <laughs> gonna say, let's um, back up just a minute. And um, I know we have a lot of questions um, through Facebook that asked, we already touched on texturing. Um, but so there are a lot of women around the world and in our country and here in St. Louis who have textured breast implants or have smooth implants. Um, what should they be thinking about and how, how common or how likely is it that something like this is going to happen to them? Yeah. So, so in women who have a textured breast implant, so it gets more complicated because within texturing, there's different types of texturing. Um, so uh, there is a type of texturing called biocell, and that is the type of texturing that the current uh, Allergan breast implants have. And um, that is also, you'll, you'll refer to it as uh, macro texturing as well. And so essentially these breast implants, um, they, they, they have this kind of gnarly surface on them. Those implants are the ones that have the highest uh, association with ALCL. Um, in uh, Denmark, the association with ALCL is around one in 6,000. Um, in 6, Australia- 6,000 women who have textured yes. breast implants, not one in 6,000 women. Correct. In, in um, the United States, a couple years ago, they said it was one in 30,000, but there have been more cases. So we predicted somewhere in one, one in 2,000 or one in three in women with the biocell textured implants. It, so just to clarify, so nobody gets too scared, um, if you have breast implants and they're smooth, generally that's not something we're terribly concerned about. If you have breast implants and they're textured, especially the biocell texturing, which happens to be Allergan, which is the brand name. Somebody else asked a question about particular brands. So Allergan uses the biocell texturing your risk of potentially developing this ALCL associated with your current implant is about probably, as he said, around one in 3,000. So to put that into context, your risk of developing breast cancer simply because you're a woman is one in eight. So the risk, even if you have a textured implant, is still very small. Yeah, um, somebody asked uh, just on this, uh, just they didn't see at the beginning, what is ALCL? So ALCL is a T cell lymphoma. So it's a, a blood cell or white blood cell cancer. And it stands for anaplastic large cell lymphoma. And there is a version of this ALCL associated with breast implants, textured breast implants. That's what we're talking about. 
Um, and again, just to reiterate also um, that it is when he says associated with the implant, it's confined generally to that implant. It's not actually in your bloodstream like an ALCL might be otherwise, um, especially when you catch it early. So um, let's let's jump ahead again to kind of what women should do. So all women who have had breast augmentation or breast reconstruction with, with implants or any type of breast implant surgery should know that breast implants are not lifetime devices and usually at some point they need to be replaced and they should be monitored. So regardless of your concern for ALCL or not, even if you have a smooth implant, you should be seeing your plastic surgeon on a regular basis. So every year, every two years, whatever that means, but you should be following up with your plastic surgeon on a regular basis. If you're over age 40, you should be getting mammograms annually. Uh, and most importantly, if you notice any change in your breast, like swelling, he mentioned that the majority of, of an ALCL will, pre will present with that fluid collection or seroma. If you notice something like that, if you notice skin changes, if you notice a mass, if you notice anything different about your implants, you should be calling your plastic surgeon right away so that you can be evaluated and they can help determine what the best next test is. Yeah. Um, and so the, uh, the other thing about this is when would chemotherapy be needed for ALCL? So that would be in uh, probably about 20% of cases uh, where chemotherapy or immunotherapy uh, would be required to treat it. But that in context, so you're talking about a fifth of cases of something that happens in one in 3,000 women who have a very particular type of breast implant. Um, so um, an, another thing is if, um, if you have concern as a stated or, you know, a lot of physicians still don't know what this is. So it is important, I, I can't really stress that enough, uh, to see the plastic surgeon, either the plastic surgeon